I would love to invite Nick to the stage to give us a little bit of his You know, you people make me sick. That's right. Nice. Never in my life have I been surrounded so by good. such repulsive, <laughs> inbred, rinky dick losers. And I swear to God, if you weren't my cousin, I would take a red hot poker and stick it. Oh, actually, hold on. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. This is, I'm looking at the wrong notes here, guys. Oh, shit. I grabbed the wrong stack. I, uh, I'm gonna be the best man at my cousin's wedding. Sweet man. Oh, God. Yeah, my cousin's a colorful character. Um, okay. So how do I recover? Luckily, we've got this brick... We've got this brick backdrop helping me out. Gives this whole thing a nice beheading kind of vibe. What do you think, Dan? Am I kind of locking into it? The same dread and doom? I'll tell you what. Is anybody here like serial killers? Yes. All right, go ahead, yes. Do we have any serial killers here tonight? Yeah, a couple. All right, good luck tonight, guys. You're not going to get me, but you've got my blessings. Um, but there's so many great, they're so iconic. There's so many great all-stars in the serial killer game. Uh, John Wayne Gacy, of course. Anytime a guy has three names, you know he's up to no good. And he's, he's a clown, too, for anyone who doesn't know. So he's part of our comedy here, whether we like it or not. Uh, there's Crazy, Crazy Carol. She's a great one. Uh, we've already heard about her tonight. There's, um, uh, shit, the, who's the handsome one? There's a little... Yes, Al Bundy, thank you, yes. A surprise to the nation. We thought he was America's dad. Because he was there on the couch, one hand on the remote, the other hand down his pants, in complete control of his life. You understand? He's in control of what he's looking at and what he feels. That guy knew what he was doing. Um, but I think the real, the real serial killer for us all is Mr. Jeffrey Dahmer. You guys remember Jeffrey Dahmer? He's a real colorful character. Um, he was the guy, so what he'd do is he'd invite male prostitutes over, hit them in the head with a hammer, chop them up, and then put them in the fridge. And that way, later that night, when he wakes up and he's like, mm, mm, I'm getting peckish. Go in the kitchen, get a little white bread, slather some mayonnaise on it, and then put a big old foot on it. That's right. And anytime I hear something like that, man, I'm just like, I get real homesick. Because I'm from the Midwest, and I grew up on mayonnaise sandwiches. We didn't do the foot, we didn't do the feet, uh, we did bologna, which is probably... Close. Yeah, 3%? Human meat, max. It's not... <laughs> um, but Jeffrey Dahmer, he's, he, he's a textbook serial killer, okay? And even when he was a kid, he exhibited all three classic warning signs of being from the Midwest. <laughs> those are the following. First of all, he's, a, he's an iconic 90s figure, and the Midwest owns the 90s. We made a unanimous decision that we perfected fashion in 1991, and we've stuck with it since. So, the 90s. Number two, sexual repression. The Midwest owns sexual repression. Have you seen the lawns up there? <laughs> they're, they're, they're to the millimeter. Dads are out there measuring it by rulers. This is, these are not guys who are getting what they want in life. And, and mom's not any better either, because she's on her eighth casserole. You get it? She keeps trying to fill the oven, and the casserole is not going to fill it up for us. Um, so that's number two. And number three, the greatest sign of the Midwest of all, I think is, is, is exemplified by Jeffrey Dahmer's haircut. Let's try to envision it now. It's basically a half-assed mullet. Which, if you think about it, is an amazing, beautiful thing. Because a mullet is already a half-assed haircut. Do you understand? It's like business in the front, party in the back. It's the dumbest thing you've ever seen. And he's half-assed that. So we're looking at a quarter-ass, people. Quarter-assing it. And that is what the Midwest is all about. That's what we do best in the Midwest. We tell you we're going to do a shitty job, honestly. And then we make it even shittier than you could ever imagine. I mean, let's start with the name, Midwest. Boy, that's an exciting name. <laughs> Suggests that maybe it's somewhere, let's say this is a map of America, in the middle of America. But oh no, not the Midwest. 
We're about right here. We're about an hour and a half away from the East Coast. This is as far as we made it, you understand? We're like, all right guys, let's go all the way to California. And they're like, man, it gets dark, doesn't it? <laughs> let's just stay here and eat some mayonnaise sandwiches. How about that? <laughs> and we'll tell them it's the Midwest. Uh, <laughs> and so the Midwest is a beautiful thing. And I think, just to wrap it all up for you folks, I'm gonna to explain to you the most Midwestern object on the planet. And that is mom jeans. And I'm so proud that they're making a comeback right now. So first of all, the quarter ass, right? If you look at the mom jeans, it really only showcases that lower quarter ass, the dumpy part of the ass, you understand? And the rest of it is perfectly flattened down. So there's no question of what you're looking at. Uh, the second thing, of course, is the sexual repression. And so the mom jeans pull very tightly, <laughs> preventing any blood flow to the genitals whatsoever. And, uh... <laughs> oh, good, good God, everybody. Well, that's it, that's it. The, the last one of the 90s. Guys, I'm sorry to disappoint. Those of you who sat in the front row thinking I was gonna do the tall man skit. Not this time, guys. Anyway, that's it for me. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you so much, Nick.